Hello, everyone, and welcome. Thank you all so much for joining us today for this live stream event. My name is Alexia, and I am the project and event manager of the Microsoft Reactor Toronto. We will share session resources, links, and um, take your comments in the chat. But before we begin, I would like to quickly review two items with you, our code of conduct and our event guidelines. So first, our code of conduct, please take a second to review uh, the page on the screen. Microsoft Reactor seeks to provide a respectful environment for both our audience and presenters. We do encourage engagement and questions in the chat, but please be mindful of your commentary and remain professional as well as on topic. Secondly, and lastly, our event guideline, this session is being recorded and will be available on demand through the Microsoft Reactor YouTube channel in about 24 to 48 hours. As mentioned before, I will be sharing the link for that um, YouTube channel in the chat later. Although if you've not been in a live stream through YouTube before, please note that you will have to create an account on YouTube in order to access and interact in the chat. You can set that up now. And if you're unable to use the chat, but have any questions, feel free to reach out to us on our social media or on Meetup. Which takes us to today's session. I will bring in our speaker in um, in a quick second here. Thank our speaker for the day. Hello, how are you? Hello, how are you? I'm doing well. Very good. Thank you so much for joining us all the way from Netherlands. It's very exciting to have you here. Yeah, thank you for having me. Of course. Yeah, well, take it away. Yeah, thank you. Perfect. Hi, everyone, and welcome to my session, Build and Deploy PyTorch Models with Azure Machine Learning. My name is Henk Boelman, and I'm a cloud advocate based in the Netherlands, and I'm focusing on getting you started with Azure Machine Learning on Azure. And today, I'm going to talk to you about how you can use Azure Machine Learning to train um, your PyTest models and finally deploy them. Um, I want to start sh with sharing my screen. Yeah, there we are. Thank you. Um, so let's get started. So my name is Henk Boelman. I'm a cloud advocate. And you can find me on Twitter. You can ask me questions there if you have any questions about the content today. You can just send me a tweet. Um, you can find a lot of resources, tutorials, um, workshops on my GitHub. And you can read more in-depth blogs um, about Azure Machine Learning and Cognitive Services and basically everything Azure related on my blog. So what are we going to talk about in this session? We're first going to dive in and have a look around on Azure Machine Learning. Then we're going to train a PyTorch classification model, create a machine learning pipeline, and deploy to a managed endpoint. So first, the big question, what is Azure Machine Learning? So Azure Machine Learning is a service that consists of a set of cloud services. So there is a container registry. There is a blob storage for our data. There is um, the actual machine learning service itself. Um, there is a what was it? Uh, there is a key vault for storing your um, credentials. So this set of cloud services um, gives us kind of the ability to train and do the whole machine learning service lifecycle. Um, and this set of cloud services can be controlled using the Python SDK or the Azure CLI. And those two together enables you to kind of prepare your data, build your models, manage your models, and deploy them. So I'm not going to show you that much slides today. I'm going to show you um, lots and lots of demos and a lot of code on how to do this. So this is Azure Machine Learning. So if you have created the Azure Machine Learning resource in Azure, you can go to ml.azure.com. Here you can log in, and then you get this interface. So let's take a look on the left menu of all the things and all the, um, all the items that are there. So first of all, this is your dashboard. Here you can see all your previous run. You can quickly go to all your compute. 
to your models, to your data sets, so you can quickly access everything um, you, you last used from your dashboard. There are also some tutorials on how to get started, and you can start creating a new thing in Azure Machine Learning. So we have notebooks. You can run your Jupyter notebooks here in the machine learning workspace. There's automated machine learning. We're not going to dive into that today, but this basically helps. Uh, we give it a set, a, a data set, and then it will figure out um, kind of which algorithm is the best to solve your problem. There is a designer where you can basically do graphically what I'm going to show you today in code. But here, our journey starts, data sets. So for every machine learning project, you need data. And this data can be on a data store. And on the data stores, you manage the connections to where your data actually is. So here we have an Azure Blob Storage. Here we have an Azure File Share. And we can create new data stores here, um, for instance, to an Azure Data Lake or to an SQL Server. Um, so here we manage the connection. The, this is kind of the pointer to your data. On the data sets, we create um, the data set that points to the files or the, the data that is on one of your data stores. For this, we're going to use today, we're going to use our data set or my data set, the Lego Simpsons version one. It's going to index the data set. So this data set is stored on one of my data stores. We see that there are 591 files in, it's around 30 megabytes. Um, there's a description, Simpsons data set with Lego figures. Um, here gives us some code samples on how to consume it. We can explore it, takes a little while, but now we can actually see what is in this data set. Hey, there is the, the one, here is some, uh, here is a Simpson. So what we are going to build in this uh, 45 minutes an hour is actually a model that can, be, can classify, look at an image and tells us, hey, I'm like 90% sure that I see Bart Simpson on this image. Um, under experiments, we keep track of all our runs. So what we are going to do is we're going to create an experiment, Simpsons PyTorch in this case, and we're going to create and train a new version of the model, and that is called a run. So under an experiment, you have multiple runs of that experiment. And every time you can lock your output, you can lock some of your um, your for instance, the accuracy or other metrics. And then you can compare these different runs and see which one, which model, which run is, com is performing the best. <clears throat> Under components, you can create pieces of code that you can reuse later. So you give it input and it generates output. And these components you can use in pipelines. I'll we'll dive into that at kind of the end of the sessions. Um, and the models, you can save your models. And I always see this as kind of like a NuGet repository for models. So when your run is done, it delivers you an artifact. And that artifact, you can register in model management. So you register it in model management and everyone else can connect to that model managers, management to pick out the model. So for instance, when we are done, we will have a Lego model version 17. We will register it. And then later on, the one that builds software around the model can pull that model with version 17 out and start deploying it. Under endpoints, we will find our deployed models. Here we see that this model, Simpsons classification, is running in a managed endpoint. And here we have two models running in a container instance. And then we have real-time endpoints. These are APIs. So these are your models wrapped in an API. And here there are batch endpoints. On the compute, we kind of manage the compute that is used for um, running your Jupyter notebooks, for training your machine learning model, and doing the inference on your, on your model. So this can be as a Kubernetes service for very large-scale inferencing. These are compute clusters, I have two. 
I have Optimus Prime and I have Bumblebee. Optimus Prime consists of standard NC6 machines. These NC6 machines are um, the cheapest machines that have a GPU. So NVIDIA optimized for compute, compute six, and these are CPU uh, optimized machines. Because for some things, you just don't need a GPU. You can go to Optimus Prime. We see that I have six uh, nodes in my cluster up and running. Um, and that is probably not the best way to do it. So what you want to do is, is here have them scale down to actually zero nodes. So then if you don't use your machine, of, if you don't use any compute, your cluster will shut down and you will not be built. But now I'm paying around 10 to eight to $9 an hour to have these compute up and running. But if they're up and running, they're very responsive. And so you all don't have to wait for um, all these nodes to spin up. Um, we went to data stores. Data labeling is an easy tool that helps you label your data and linked service you can connect to other services in Azure. Um, so I have a GitHub repository called Azure Machine Learning Azure, Azure Machine Learning Service PyTorch VS Code. You can also go to my GitHub and find it here. So what I've done is I've started up a code space, and now you actually see how I'm going to use a notebook in code spaces to train a model in Azure Machine Learning. Why would I use code spaces? Because I always struggle with installing the right version of Python, the right version of that dependency, and the right version of that dependency. Um, every time. And now with code spaces, I just click run code space and my environment is up and running. So this is Jupyter Notebook. And if you're not familiar with, uh, with this is a notebook. If you're not familiar with notebooks, um, a notebook is very easy to prototype things. So you have cells. In that cell, you put code. You hit a play button. It will execute that code. And the context and your variables are available in all the cells. Um, so that is also if you run one up and go one down and, and so on. So you can mix and match here. So we run this cell. And what I always do is I always put all my dependencies in the first cell. But you can also put your dependencies on top of every cell. That is all up to you. So we're using the Azure ML SDK version 1.38. Last week, that was the latest version. So now I'm going to connect to my workspace. Um, you can do workspace from config that works perfectly on your local file of on your local machine. But in a Jupyter Notebook, you want to use the Azure CLI authentication. So what I do is I'm saying authentication, use the CLI. So now it is using the CLI to authenticate. So what I can do is I can actually the say az login min min use in device mode to log in to my Azure subscription. And then Azure Machine Learning is able to connect to my workspace, to the workspace I've created here. So I'm running this cell, I'm connecting to my workspace, I'm connecting to my compute target Optimus Prime, connecting to my default data store. And I'm connecting to my experiment called Simpsons PyTorch. So here we see it again. And now we're going to do some remote trading. But first, I need to connect to my data set. So, I set my, so I'm loading my data set into Simpsons data set here by running the command data set get by name. I give it my workspace, and I'm giving it a name. Running that cell. So now I have my data set. We saw what was in there, all images of Simpsons. Next, I need an environment because my training script has to run in some environment. Um, so there are a few ways of doing that. You have curated environments. These are environments managed and kept up to date by, uh, by Microsoft, and you can just give Give it a name. So in this case, we're using an Azure Machine Learning uh, base image with PyTorch 1.10. 
running Ubuntu 18.4 and being optimized for GPU use. So I say environment get and I clone it and now I have access to that environment. Now that I have the environment where I'm going to train my model in and the data set, I need to configure how this is going to happen. So I need to create a script run configuration. Um, so what this script run configuration does is tell how this script train.py has to run. So you wonder probably now what is in the train.py. So I will show you. So everything is located in my source directory. So everything that is in this directory will be copied over to the image, to this environment. And then this is the script train.py that will be executed. So I'm going to scripts to train, and I only have one script here. <coughs> but here is the training script. And where did I get that training script? I got that from this website, PyTorch. I went to tutorials, beginner, transfer learning. And I went here and I copied this script. And I used my own data set. I added a few things so it would work a little bit better with Azure Machine Learning. So what I've done is I've added first a few dependencies. So I gave the script the ability to parse incoming arguments and I imported Azure Machine Learning so that I could connect to the current context and start logging data and have that connection with Azure Machine Learning. So I'm parsing my incoming arguments like where is the data? How many training rounds do we have to do? What is the learning rate? What is the momentum? Parse it into variables. And then here is the train method. We go into the different training loops. And in every loop, I added these two lines. So I say run.log this float, the current uh, loss and the current accuracy. And because it is a float, um, because and it is logging it all under the same name, it is automatically understanding that it has to create a graph from it because it is an array of floats that is coming into um, Azure Machine Learning. I'll show you the graph later when it is running. So we're lo uh, logging here again. Okay, we're logging here. And then finally, we'll run log the final accuracy. And one thing you should never forget is to actually save your model in the outputs folder. Because this script is running in that environment on your compute cluster and your cluster will shut down and your image will be detached from your cluster. Um, if you don't save it, the output, your artifact, then it is gone. And so here we have save it in the outputs folder. So everything you save in the outputs folder is automatically copied back to the run in your experiment. So we save the labels and we save the actual model file. So now the script run configuration. We tell it where it can find our, our files. We tell it which script it has to execute, terrain.py, on which compute target, in which environment and with which incoming arguments. If we take a look at the arguments, we see here that we're connecting to the Simpsons data set as a named input and mounted. So now what it is doing, when this image is spun up, this environment, it mounts this data set as a directory and it puts the, uh, the, the path of that virtual directory in this variable. So now my script just thinks, oh, the data is in that directory. Super. So let's do that. We have our environment. And now we have our script run configuration. And now we have to submit that to our experiment. And then it will create a new run ID with this, this ID. And we have a widget. And with that widget, we can actually see what is going on in our training, in our environment. 
So now it's still um, idle. But what it will do is it will deploy and it will start training. So we let it run and we'll go back to this presentation deck where we will actually have a look about what actually went, went on because a lot happens when you submit um, your experiment to your cluster. So we did that from our local computer, our Azure notebook, or in this case, GitHub Actions. At the moment we said submit, it snapshotted that folder with our training script and copied it over to our run and our experiment. Then it created a Docker image. It pulled the base image or it made an image based on our own specifications. It deployed that Docker container to our compute target. It mounted our data store or data set launched our training script and then when our script was running it is sending all the output and all the logging back to our experiment and because we had a widget we could connect to our experiment and look at that stream and then finally when the training script is done it copies over everything in the outputs folder to our experiment so let's see if it is doing anything yes and here we see these are the graphs that are being generated by those two lines of code where we say run.log. We had 10 trainings run, so it should stop at 9. You can look at the driver log. We see that it is done and that our model completed with zero uh, with like 98% accuracy. It is driver log. It is done copying back everything and now it is completed we can go to Azure machine learning go to our experiments Simpson PyTorch here we see the latest 620 for me it is 620 we go here and we see took around two minutes is a link to the data set that's being used. So this is really handy because now in our run, we can actually see, oh, hey, this data was being used and we can dive into the data if we see something why our model is not working. Um, there were no outputs, the environment, it's an auto save. And we see the metrics here. I'll zoom out a little bit so we can see them a little bit better um we have our outputs here you find all the log files back and here is what i was talking about these are the two artifacts that have been automatically saved so here we have all the labels and here we have the actual model and on the snapshot you'll find the training script nicely backed up for you and everything else that was in that directory what we can do now is we can um register our model so let's uh, reactor so Ronto. so here we say from this current run context register the model name it simpsons classification you can find it in the outputs folder we can give some hint about which framework we are being used we can give a description and um, we can Tag it. If we go now to models, we will actually see it here. And here is the model we have created. Oh, yeah. And one thing you can see here now from the model, we can go back to the run. And from the run, we can go back to the data. So it is still completely traceable what we have done. Um, so now let's see if we can deploy this model, write some software around it, deploy it as a container in an Azure container instance so we can actually test it and see if this model is any good. So for this, I'm not going to use a curated environment. I'm going to use my own environment because Mostly in production, you want to know what is exactly in that image. Um, 
So the only thing I'm doing is I'm creating a new environment calling Simpsons and Friends. I'm adding these packages like HTML default, PyTorch, and Pillow. But now I have that environment, and this is completely the same thing as the environment we used uh, later on. An environment is an environment in Azure Machine Learning. So next, we have to create an inference config. We tell where our script is that is going to do the inference and which environment it has to use. So the environment we've created here. And we can find the scoring script here. A scoring script has two methods. There's a minimum of two methods. We have an init method. In the init method, you load in your model. And the run method is used is the method that's been called when something is being posted to the, to the endpoint. So here we load the model because loading models takes a lot of time and you don't want to do that on every request. Here we pick the image, um, we pre-process it, we check if there is a GPU in there, and then we run the model, uh, we run the image or the tensor to the model, and then we see, we look at the predictions and we return the prediction and the accuracy as JSON in this result variable. So we're doing that. And next, when we have our appearance config, we need a deployment configuration. And this is more about how does this Azure Container instance have to look. Um, this Azure Container instance, um, we need two cheap CPU cores and four gigabytes of memory. And we will call it like a classifier. And then let's deploy it here. Um, so we connect to the latest version of the model, version 17, that is our model. And then we say model deploy. Name it Simpsons classification test. This is the model you have to deploy. This is the inference config that says which scoring script it has to use. And this is the deployment config and tells you how the Azure Container instance has to run. And if it already exists, overwrite it. And here we say, as you continue in the service, wait for deployment and show us the output. So nice, it is done because I already have this environment. It is reusing it, so it doesn't take any time. And because the Azure Container Instance was already created, it just had to redeploy and, uh, the image with the new version of our model. And here we see it is done that. So now we can start sending test images to the endpoint. So you can do that, of course, using, um, it's an API. So you can use basically whatever you want. But what I'm doing here is I'm just going to use a container service run, um, which will uh, post this JSON to that endpoint for me. So here we see it's a returning JSON. It is returning JSON. It's pretty fast. It tells us that it sees Homer Simpson on this image. Is it correct? Yes, this is Homer. But have a look at March. And let's hope it was with a capital M. Probably not. March is only the lower one. Here we see it. The prediction is March. It's 100% sure. It's pretty cool. Let's see. And it is March. And these are images not used while we were training the endpoint or the model, of course. This is Bart Simpson. So we actually created quite a good model in this short amount of time. Let me see. I'm, I'm going to look at some of the questions before I will continue with. Um, Exactly. <laughs> Perfect. Hank, can we use PyTorch and TensorFlow in Azure Machine Learning? Yes, absolutely. Because these are these environments you create. You can run every kind of framework thing you want. I mean, using TensorFlow instead of PyTorch. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, you can. Is there any free Azure subscriptions to use for learning? Um, 
yes, when you sign up for Azure, there is always the free credit you get in the beginning. There are a lot of cool options for students. Um, so maybe um, Bruno can paste that in the chat. And um, if you go to the um, PyTorch learning pad at Microsoft Learn, um, there is a way of doing a little bit to train your uh, train your models in a in an environment. Cool. Any more questions? Keep them coming. Nice. So now we have our model and it is working. But I kind of randomly used some parameters. So I'm not sure if my model is the best it could get. So what I would do now as a data scientist, probably I would start tweaking with my learning rate, with the number of training rounds, with my data. And that is a lot of work because my model now trained in two minutes. That's really cool for a demo, but if you have lots and lots and lots of data, then it takes a long time to do that. So you would take tweak your training algorithm a little bit. You would change your parameters for those training algorithms all the time. Um, and that is very repetitive, very time consuming. And I think it is also very boring to do that. So there is a better way. There is a feature in um, Azure Machine Learning that is called Automated Hyperparameter Tuning or the Hyper Drive. And that can help you speed up that process. So how does it work? It kind of works the same as um, training the model. But now we wrap our script run, which is exactly the same, in a hyperdrive configuration where we enter hyperparameter sampling data. So what we did is we parsed in arguments, like where is the data, how many training runs, um, and so on. But now we parse them as random sampling parameters in my case. We say, hey, for the number of training rounds, choose a random number between three and five. For the learning rate, choose something between 0 0.001 and 0 0.005, and your momentum. And what you do is, Try it 16 times, spin up four instances next to each other, and your goal is to maximize your accuracy. So I'm run that, and of course my graph is gone, but we will run it again. And now it is trying to spin up four instances and it is totally going to run it 16 times. So we have to wait a little bit before the first one um, starts running, because then it will give us data and starts comparing the different runs to each other. And then finally it will tell us, hey, this run with these parameters gives us the best model. It would be really nice if it would show it now. It's starting, hopefully. So, okay, I know it better. We will go to zoom out a little bit, please. Yes. So this is the one running. This is the one we've completed. And this is my hyperdrive test, what I did, I think, before. You all. Yeah. So when I go to metrics, here, yeah, this is what I wanted to show you. So here we see the output of all the different runs. So in the training script, when I was done, I locked the final accuracy. And that is the parameter that is monitoring. So here we see all the different runs that had um, and, and the accuracy of all those runs. So here we see already a little bit that some runs were doing pretty well, but some of them were, were not doing so well. 
And here we can figure out why that was. So here we see if we do three trainings rounds with a high learning rate and high momentum, it will result in a low accuracy. Um, and then what can show here some more. You can make it also like this and, and this. Come on, you can do it. And that 3D space, pretty cool. Here we can see all the different metrics, but this is the metric we actually monitor. And from here, it is basically the same run as and the same things because here we will see the training script. We'll see all the logging. Here we will see the outputs, the, the actual model is here. Um, so this is really handy to prototype and pick the best parameters. It also tells us here, right, this run had the best parameters. So now we can go here. Here, you see it is starting with some of them. We can say hyperdrive, give us the best run by primary metric. And then we can register that model and pick that model from there. Um, because this will kind of run for <laughs> about 18, 90 minutes now. Um, we cannot actually not do that. But maybe at the end of the presentation, it will be uh, it will be done. So this is all really cool playing around in uh, in Azure Machine Learning and Jupyter Notebooks, and that is really good for kind of prototyping things because then Jupyter Notebook you can't really bring into uh, continuous integration, continuous deployment kind of situation. So we need something else to run these scripts. So we also have the Azure CLI. And the Azure CLI is a client line interface, which you can actually do the same thing with as with a Python um, SDK. So it enables us also to train deploy models, but then for the command line. And if you have a command line, you can actually put that into a CI CD thing like GitHub Actions or Azure DevOps. Um, but still, because it is in the Azure CLI, you can still have that training script that we just saw the train.py and the deploy.py and actually have that just in source control. So you can actually see and um, work as a team on that. But what we're going to do now is we're going to have a look at how we can create a machine learning pipeline using that Azure CLI. So what we're going to create is a pipeline that takes in the data, trains a PyTorch model, converts that model to Onyx, and then register both models. Um, and that is what we can do with a training pipeline, not in the deployment thing here. So the Azure CLI can run YAML files. And these YAML files um, contain the configuration how these jobs have to run. And if we take a look at this pipeline.yaml, we see all these kind of same and familiar things. We have the data set, we have our data store, we have our compute target, and actually we should be able to it should have auto completed. Let me see if I am not if I'm not connected to uh, there is my subscription hang here. Of course, I wanted to show you that. Then we will reload the window. Come on, we can do it. Do that. 
And then I'm going to do that here again. I'll come back to you in like 10 seconds. I'm trying to filter out all the other subscriptions, which worked perfectly. Like five minutes before, that's always how it works, right? Yes, I know. Hey, no problem. In the meantime, answering one live question around how they can test uh, and a student can test this. There is an Azure free for student, which is basically you, you can register yourself, you get $100 per credit and other services. I just shared the link, how you can do it, how you can use it. Take a look. It's a super cool way to, to test this stuff. And hey, if you're in Azure, you can go for machine learning, the Azure machine learning stuff. So that's my two notes there while you are filtering your tons of subscription. <laughs> yeah. So I think this, uh, this, 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 this will work. OK. Um, yes. So there is a fish, an Azure machine learning extension for Visual Studio Code, and that of course works also in GitHub Code Spaces. So what we have here is we had our training pipeline. Now we see that it's also auto completing. We here have Azure machine learning. So here we see my data sets, we see all my models. Endpoint. So this is actually the same as what we would see here. Um, and now, because you can generate, it can help you generate these YAML configurations files for you. So here I can now start typing like, hey, Optimus Prime. So it will auto complete that. Or which data sets shall we use? Um, Lego, Simpsons, one, two, three. Oh, let's use this data set. So I'm actually going to execute this YAML file because it will also take a little bit of time. So let's take a look in um, what we see here. These are the jobs, the runs that it is going to do for us. We start with training the model, and that is specified in train.yaml. We're registering the PyTorch model, specified in the registry.yaml. We convert it, specified in the convert to Annex YAML. And then we use the same register as here for the onyx. But because we can give it parameters, it behaves a little bit different. So let's take a look at the, these components. And these components you can register and reuse later on. So we go to register.yaml. Um, no, let's go to the training YAML because that is what we've done also in the, in the previous steps. We say name train the model, display name training, it's version one. And here we have the inputs, same as what we did in the, in the, in the Python. We specified the learning, learning rate, where the trainer data is, what the momentum was. We tell it where to put the outputs, the environment, it should actually autocomplete these environments. And then we tell it which command it has to execute. So basically, a component, you describe it. It has inputs. It has outputs. It is a place where the code is. It needs an environment. And it needs a command to execute. And you specify that all here. And now, because we have submitted it, it's cool. It is here. You can click on that link. Then you automatically go into Azure Machine Learning and right to the right run. And the cool thing what to do is now is it is visualizing your kind of your run, your 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 pipeline. So we're taking in the input the Lego V1. Here it is training the model. We see the graphs. It is it's generating. The learning rate, ah, 
our hyperdrive run is also completed. Thank you. Now we see that it is here trying to convert it to Onyx. And here, parallel, it is registering it. And then finally, it will register it here. And what we can see here, this is just another run again, where the outputs are the model, the labels, with our metrics, with our um, snapshot of the training script. And here there are three because I had them all in the same directory. So this is really, really nice. And in a few minutes, you will see it will register some new models under models, which is quite PyTorch. And then later on, an Onyx model. So the final part, what I want to show you is, is that you can deploy these models to online managed endpoints. And these endpoints are really, really cool. In the previous demo in Python, we deployed them to an Azure Container instance, which was really nice for testing. But you saw me overwriting a model, and maybe that means that a model is going down. So uh, you probably want to have something different in production, and this can really help you in production. So online managed endpoints can help you scale and um, has, yeah, can help you scale your models in production. So what happens? A client comes in, types www.hangsmodel.com, and that hits my endpoint. And an endpoint can have multiple deployments. So in that endpoint, I can have my model version 1 deployed and my model version 2 deployed. One is running on one type of compute, and the other one is running on another type of compute, maybe TPU enabled. And then it can route 90% traffic to version 1 and 10% traffic to version 10, uh, to 10% traffic to model version 2. And now these deployments can also individually scale and load balance. So there might be one node up and running, but you can say like if the traffic hits like 90%, then bam, let's go and scale out and scale up to 10. 20, 20 um, compute instances under it. So this is so handy if you want to test a new model, if you have a new model. Um, so I've done it. I've done, I've deployed the PyTorch one and the Onyx one in a managed endpoint using the Azure CLI. So I've created an endpoint called Simpsons gratification with authentication mode. You need a key for it. Then I have two deployments, Onyx deployment and the PyTorch deployment. And now we can test it. So first, let's go here and go to endpoints. Here we have the managed endpoint, Simpsons classification. And here we see that there is Onyx version 2, PyTorch version 1 deployed, and they both go, um, take 50% 50, 50 of the traffic. They run on standard F2 machines, cheaper, uh, cheaper CPU machines. And here we have the PyTorch 2. We can actually do some monitoring on it. It will load. We can also, it is also connected to um, the application insights. So you can actually drill um, deeper in the metrics. Here we have the deployment logs where we can see um, what is going on. But let's send some requests to these models. In uh, here, let's send some requests. It's a really handy Visual Studio Code plugin that will just, you say post, and then your content type authorization and the JSON body you want to send. So here we see it is hitting PyTorch version one. And here it is hitting the Onyx one. And we see that there is a difference in time and absolutely a difference in accuracy. So with that said, let's see if our um, 
if our models are being registered. Yeah, here we have the Onyx model and here we have the PyTorch model. So our pipeline is still running. Should be done soon. It's probably, yeah, yeah, it is ready. Yeah, here we are. It is completed. It is registered to model. Details. You can still see which data set it is used, which environment it is used, which compute target, and so on. So all the metrics and everything is here. So with that said, I want to all thank you for your attention. And let's pick up some questions. Yep. I am not. I am just a mute. So we we answered the questions that were there about if we can do the same with TensorFlow. You mentioned yes, we can do this. Someone was asking to test in this Azure free account. And I see another question uh, in other places that are not here. So go to spaces. Super cool. We can do this online. Yes, I, I was in the pain to have the right version of everything locally. So super cool. And I have another one here that someone is, is all of the features that we have in code desktop are on the code space on the web. Actually, sorry, everything that is you have a Visual Studio code is also you can also have as a plugin in uh, code spaces here. Yeah. Perfect. Yes, that was one of the questions because that's probably on my side because I tell people that some extension like Copilot is not on the on, on the web view, but because the way not all of the things are there, but hey, it's super cool. To be honest with you, I haven't tried this. I haven't tested this on Cold Spaces on GitHub Dev. I will give it a try because I was working locally and I missed this. This is amazing. This is paradise. Yeah, you just have this uh, Code Space running for all your demos, for all your things you're programming, because what normally happens on my machine is, is that I'm going to do something else. I mini uh, conda environments or something and then i will install something and then my other demo doesn't work because it needs another version and here it is all nicely isolated so i really love working with that and the other cool thing is i'm now on my desktop because i'm at home but when i'm traveling even in the airplane i can just click run code space and continue exactly the same as that i was doing from home Yes, that's that's super cool. For me, it's the top learning for today. Another is I know I read, but I never saw running the manage endpoints, which are super, super cool. I love this that how Which you one? can balance the, the manage endpoint that you did 50-50 using Onyx oh, versus yeah. Python. It's, it's it's so nice. Yeah. It's it's super cool. And I'm guessing that all of this info about the scores and everything that you can start to learn from there are all in application insights. Uh, you, you mentioned that we can all have the, the logs and everything there. Yeah, so you have to add a few things if you want to have custom parameters like the result and so on, but mostly performance of your endpoints is actually in um, in Azure Machine, if in application insights. And as well also, um, what they also have done is what I noticed in the last demo I gave is that under compute, There is also a monitoring uh, tab. No, where was it? Compute, sorry, compute, compute clusters. Here, monitoring. They will tell you how much you use actually your cluster. Oh, that's super cool. So here we see this is my 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 my, my cluster. Did I actually use the GPU? Yes, I did use the GPU, so I chose right. So you never over kind of budget anymore for your for your machines. Yes, you can you can fine tune in your money basically. This is really cool. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Put it on auto refresh. So here we see what I've done. So it's, I think really really nice. Yeah. Yes, that's super super cool. And uh, I think we are we are at the end. I don't see any any other questions. We have questions for different channels, so I hope that I didn't miss any any other the, the extra questions. 
So, hey, thanks a lot, Hank. It's a pleasure to have you here as usual. I always yeah, learn thanks. a lot from you. So I hope that the next time we can do something here physically in Toronto. Exactly. That would be really nice. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Alexa, you want to, to give it a wrap? You are on mute. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to jump here uh, real quick one more time. Um, yeah. So great session. Please take a moment if uh, you have to fill up our survey for this session and share about your experience. The event code is on the screen and also the link has been shared in the chat. Um, in regards to the reactor, you can join our community by following us on social media. I also shared our YouTube channel. Again, this session as well as all of our other sessions are being recorded and are accessible on YouTube. Um, yeah, I mean, we're on most social media. And if you're interested in registering for future session, you can do so on Meetup. We have 12 um, locations all around the world where, especially with the virtual world now, we're able to have great speakers like Hank streaming from different countries um, and, you know, into our reactors. So wherever you are located, find the session that works for you and that you're interested in. And, you know, well, we're everywhere. We're all around. That was it for me. Thanks again, Hank, so much for the session today. Thanks, You're Bruno, welcome. Well. And uh, yeah, have a great day. Yes. Goodbye, thanks. Thanks, everyone.